when a sinner repents, when one sinner repents, yes. rather than 99, um, uh, 99 righteous, peop people righteous people who do not require yes. repentance. What does that mean to you? Well, to me... <laughs> Let him, I, I want to know what Matthew... Well, to, yeah, to, me, to me, it means that God finds rejoicing in, in the what it says, the repentance of sinners. I mean, God No blood, repentance. right? No blood. Well, the repentance. The, Jesus came. Repentance means you ask God for repentance, you, you ask for you, forgiveness. You, you, you can, there, there's no other way to find repentance before God except through faith in the blood of the Lamb. God hasn't got a plan B. And, and, and Actually, there was a plan B in the time of... Uh, in, in the time long before Jesus Christ came. If you read the book of Ezekiel, God says very clearly that the Father will not bear the sin of the Son and the Son will not bear the sin of the Father. Yes? And God is able to forgive the wickedness of the wicked. In fact, God says, goes on further to say that uh, God will not remember the sins even. It is as if it did not happen. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. So he goes to such an extent that if you ask God for forgiveness, then God is able to forgive you. If you ask God for repentance and you repent to God, with obviously with the true uh, repentance, then He is able to forgive you, such that your forgive uh, uh, that uh, that your wickedness will not even be remembered by God. Now, if God is then further saying in the New Testament, sorry, Jesus is saying in Luke five is it five seventeen, yeah, where He says that if one person repents there is joy in heaven one person repents yeah remember this is not atonement by blood so this is you seeking repentance so if one sinner repents there'll be joy in heaven there'll be more joy in heaven than 99 people who are righteous who don't, who don't require repentance what do you make of that well that's because uh, jesus the only reason that we can do that is because jesus came and was sacrificed for our sins, this whole concept of sacrifice. No, no, there's no mention of sacrifice in this passage. The, the whole, the whole it's about repentance, my friend. But the whole point is that we can have that repentance with God because Jesus sacrificed himself. Otherwise, if Jesus hadn't come, we would still be having to make ourselves right before God in doing these sacrifices. But Jesus came and Okay, let me, let me ask you this question. Make it simple. I asked this yeah. Simon already. Can you be forgiven without shedding blood? We can, but only because of Jesus. No, no. Answer the question. Listen to the question. Yeah. Can you? Okay, let me rephrase that. Okay. Can you be forgiven without the human sacrifice of Jesus? Not without the sacrifice of Jesus. Okay. You see, as a Muslim, I can be forgiven without the sacrifice of an animal or a human. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, I I asked Simon about the very first man. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you the same question. Do you believe? that God was able to demonstrate his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness yeah. from the first man? Or was he able to only show this uh, after the incarnation of Jesus Christ? It's very difficult. I mean, I, 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 mean, I believe that God has always shown love and mercy, and he's always had this plan. Where did he express this in before the incarnation? Well, if you look in the Old Testament, you can see the prophecies that are pointed towards Jesus. No, no, I'm not Messiah. asking the prophecies. I'm asking where did God express his love to the people before the incarnation? Do you want to... <laughs> how, how did God show his love? Now, well, we've, we've no, no, hold on, Simon. Have you... Basically, I believe, basically, I believe you're trivializing... The no, I'm not, I'm not. What I'm saying is that... Sin is a serious no, business. And it is, it is. And that's the reason I'm saying that God is able to forgive sins it, it, and he's it, able to show his love and mercy. It's not love to, to, to minimize a very real and very major problem, okay? It, that's not are you love. saying forgiveness is not love? Forgiveness is love, yes, but there, there are two aspects to sin. There's the, there's the offense against God, yeah. and then there's the, the systemic problem that sin destroys things, okay? So, so both have to be tackled. The, the, okay, the let me, Simon, let me give you an example so people can understand it better. Let me ask you this. If your neighbor's dog came and messed up your garden and put all rubbish, went into the bin and I don't know, uh, and, and spread the garbage everywhere, yeah. yes, would you forgive him? Yes. Yes? yes. Is that love? That's love, but it also may be love for me to, to, to say to him, look, can you please stop doing that because that creates... Yeah, but you didn't demand anyone's blood, did you, to do that? But I'm not God. My point exactly. <laughs> why, can, why are you more merciful than your God? 
I'm, I'm not more merciful than my If God, God can forgive, then he's merciful. If God demands blood, that is no, called no, no, payment no, 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 in no, no, blood. No, no, no. The, the it's point, not mercy, it's not forgiveness. The point is, am I really forgiving him completely and utterly from the heart? Am, am I totally free from all malice? Only you can answer that. Yeah, well... Will you forgive my, 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 your my, neighbor's my, dog and your neighbor for doing that business in your garden? Yes, but the only way I'll really be able to forgive anybody from the heart if they really wrong me is, 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 through, is through the love of God in Christ. What do you mean? Are you saying you cannot forgive someone? Do you need to be even religious to forgive? For example, if somebody was an atheist who doesn't even believe in God, yes? Can he or she, do they have the ability as a human being to forgive another human Not being? Not fully and totally, no. How do you know that? Because have you checked everyone's hearts? <laughs> I've never seen anybody who does. There's usually a I've seen a lot of people There's forgive a lot of things. Yes, yes. You know? To a degree, okay. Maybe, I, I maybe you I should go and look up people who do not believe in, um, uh, in, in violence. Yes, they forgive things which yeah, you and I, I mean, cannot I mean, maybe I mean John Lennon, imagine. John Lennon sung a lot of lovey-dovey stuff, but you ask his son, Sean, and he said his dad's a hypocrite. He knew him better than that. <laughs> it's I funny mean, he mentioned I John mean, Lennon. I mean, you know who killed John Lennon? So, Who killed uh, John Lennon? Uh, a born-again so, Christian. Somebody said they were a Christian, yes. <laughs> A born-again Christian, he said that God told him to kill this sinner, this devil. Yeah. <laughs> and John Lennon was killed by a born-again Christian. So of all the people, that is the worst example you could bring it up. Well, but anyway, look, my God is able to forgive. Really a born -again Christian. Simon, with all due respect, my God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, one of his name is al Wadud, yes, the most loving. And he's able to forgive without the shedding of blood. He's by, his, by his attribute of love, and the attribute is mercy, or Rahman, or Rahim. He is able to forgive sins. Not only that, he's also able to punish by his justice. So I'm not saying that Allah forgives everyone all the time. Allah in his wisdom, by his love, and by his nature of uh, justice, by his attribute of justice, Al-Adl, yes, he is able to either forgive or punish them depending on his wisdom. But you're saying you can never be forgiven unless and until the blood of a perfectly sinless person like Jesus Christ is shed. Am I right, Matthew? Yes. Yes? yes. You know how they say it proudly? Mashallah. And sin is not committed without the blood of God's son. And you're but that's free, exactly right? what I'm trying to understand. Okay, let me really ask you this. Okay? Was, <laughs> Jesus, was, Jesus able to was Jesus able to forgive? Jesus. Jesus was able to forgive, yes, because he was both high priest and sacrifice and God. Okay. And nothing else. If Jesus was able to forgive, why the need for blood? And and to tell you that, that you Oh by the way, he couldn't answer that question. To tell you that you are forgiven when you're not would not be loving you because you are not in No, no, I don't see. Condition. Honestly, look, with all due respect, <laughs> I do not if see you are a sinner and I don't tell you that you are still in da mortal danger of your sin before Almighty God. I am not loving you. Okay, let me ask I'm you. I'm being nice to you but I am not loving no you. if you forgive so you're loving playing games with eternal redemption why are you getting angry that's fine that's fine that's fine inshallah we'll try to because keep you are not saved because you are he's gone into preaching more again okay. anyway I'm glad you're the here Matthew. blood of Jesus Christ saves people from their sins nothing else ever can or ever will and the love of God has an edge to it and if you dismiss Christ you will perish in hell we love Christ. No, that's fine, guys. guys. Let's not mock him. He's, he's upset about something. I, I hope he finds love in his heart and mercy in his heart. You know, that's what happens when you talk a lot about blood. Yes, you get frustrated because your nafs, you know, your fitra, your own self, you don't have to be even religious for this. Yes, it will tell you that when you see injustice, your heart will speak out. Yes, and because you cannot, you're trying to subvert your natural disposition, your fitra, you get frustrated and that's what, that's what happens, unfortunately. Yes, Alhamdulillah in Islam we are taught that mercy and peace and love is the first approach of God Almighty from the very first man. Yes, when Adam salam slipped, the first thing Allah taught him to do was how to seek repentance. And this is the mercy of Allah. Yes, he did not require that Adam has to pay him in blood or the demand the blood of a human being like in the new uh, new covenant of Jesus Christ like you preach you know this is the the mercy and beauty of Allah and that's why we as Muslims say that Allah doesn't require any blood
Allah does not require anybody's sacrifice. He is perfectly able to forgive you, to show you love. One of his attributes is Al-Wudud, you know, the most loving. Another is Ar-Rahman, yes, the merciful, Ar-Rahim, and these are the all the all encompassing mercy. This is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes of mercy and love. And of course, he's just as well. So he just doesn't let everyone go scot-free. If he wants to punish them, he does punish them as well. But this is all within his wisdom, alhamdulillah. So let me ask you the same question that I asked you. Do you want to I'll say something? Go, I'll yeah, go on. I got to go in a minute, but I should say one last, just the whole point about, oh God, why is he not merciful, he needs a blood sacrifice, I think that's the last point I make is that God, this wasn't God's original plan, in the Garden of Eden before the fall, God's plan was that we'd live in perfect harmony, we wouldn't need all this sacrifice, and then we as humans, we were susceptible to temptation, and that led to the fall, and then... The fall Jesus, was from the very first man. Yeah. <laughs> The fool, the fool was from humanity, the fool was in So, odds. my question is this, why would you require blood in the first place? Why can't God just forgive? Because humans didn't... The, God's original plan was that we'd live in harmony, but then humans went against God, and that was why we required no, but even if, even if men go against God, why can't you forgive if they ask for sincere repentance? Because they let Satan into their lives, they let the temptation, they let Satan in and that was, there have to be consequences for no, that. I, I do understand that, look, yeah. the, the whole idea of Satan leading them to this temptation is because Satan wanted you to fall. But I'm asking, why can't God lift this fallen man when he sincerely repents to God Almighty? That is the question I'm asking. I'm not asking why he fell, we know why he fell. Yeah. We know why men yeah. uh, commit sin. Yes, in fact, there is a hadith which says that "Kullu bani Adam katta wa khairul kattain at tawabiun." Means every man, every human being is susceptible to sin, and every man sins. But the best among them, the best among the sinners, are those who repent, those who seek forgiveness. I'm asking you: once a man has acknowledged his mistake, yes, yeah. and he and he turns to God Almighty, yeah. yes, to show him mercy. Why yeah. can't this merciful and loving God show him mercy instead of saying, no, you're not forgiven until I torture and kill my beloved son? I mean, the, the thing I'd say is that we chose to turn away from God. God didn't want the distance. We created that divide between us and God. We, we had to go to the temple and we make ourselves cleanse and do these sacrifices to reach God because we were dirty after the fall. And we made that choice and God doesn't want to take our free will we made that choice but God loved us so much that he sacrificed his own son so that we could have a relationship with him now and now we don't need all these sacrifices and go to the temple now we can just talk to him like he's but you haven't answered the question my friend I'm asking once you have turned yeah. to God after acknowledging your mistake and repented for your sins why is God unable to forgive you without because, shedding of blood because it is such that was, that was such a big thing that happened the fall that what is a, what is such a big thing the fall, eating a we fruit were, eating we a piece of fruit because this this was such a big thing that took us away from what we turned the other way god can't force us to turn back to him no no god is not forcing you you yourself by your own will by your free will you're expressing yeah. to god almighty that i've committed a great sin please forgive me i repent to you why can't God show his love and show his mercy? You know, when, when you're in the court of law, yeah. you know, sometimes the people who are in front of the judge, they plead with the judge. Please forgive me. This is my first mistake. Yes, I'll not commit this again. The judge many times does forgive. This is a human yeah, being. Yeah. If a human being is able to forgive you, why can't God Almighty? Well, the, I think the thing is, is that you'll say, oh, the judge can show leniency. Yeah. But a lot of the time they don't. They, you still have No, I'm talking about the time sentence. when they do. But. Um, but if, if, if a judge it, can show mercy and yeah. show leniency to the sinner, to the person who committed the crime, yes, yeah. then why can't God do it? Well, I think God, God still looked after them. He didn't abandon Adam and Eve. No, but he didn't the forgive fall. them. And I, he didn't forgive the them, did he? That's the consequence. There have to be, you can't remove the consequence. There's a consequence to what they did. Yeah. And if, it's the same as if you're a child, you might love them. 
but you have to give them some kind of punishment because they have to recognize that what they've done is really wrong and they might be really repentful and sorry but there still needs to be that punishment in place so that they why that's a question again. why why can't god forgive they need to anybody else wants to take this question you want to come here okay no problem matthew thanks a lot so the question that i ask if you want to no, no, you want to talk, then you'll have to come here. Otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll have to complete this here. So, as we have seen, alhamdulillah, you see, in Christianity, they cannot show us where God expresses his love, mercy, and forgiveness. Like I said, come here if you want to talk, otherwise stay there and continue. Okay, if you're not coming, then we'll end this here. So, what I was saying is that, alhamdulillah, we have demonstrated clearly from this talk here, from this dialogue here, that the Christians are unable to show us where God expresses his mercy and his love. And the only way they can demonstrate this is by the torture and the killing of a perfectly innocent human being. And that was Jesus Christ, my Messiah, my Messiah, and my prophet and my messenger. By the torture and killing of this man is the only way they can say that God is expressing his love. But where is the love and mercy in killing a perfectly, per perfectly innocent man? And this is something that you guys have to let us know that if this is love or this is just a payment in blood for something that God is perfectly capable of doing, which is to show his love, mercy and forgiveness. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't shout. You had your opportunity. Why shouting? Yeah, I know. No. Guys, come and take your microphones. Hello, guys, Christians. I hope you guys watch our videos on dawawise.com. <laughs> yeah, we got a new channel. We got a new channel, dawawise.com. Why do you think I'm wearing this? Can I just ask you, when I told you before... No questions at the moment. I don't take any questions. Dawa, um, are you recording? You no. Are. There, it was a panel. I you was need help. With you. Uh, oh, that was a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have to go. I was muted, everybody. Uh, My friend was on a video call. I wasn't in control of the microphones. I know. So, you should be... Write them an email. There's another one. You might get a response. Capital letters, you say. Yes. Alright, there you go. You can have the microphone.